Southwest's flood of flight cancellations just this last weekend, spiking jet fuel prices, ongoing worker shortages, and travel restriction changes have the airlines playing defense on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's look at Delta shares. They are moving higher right now, or at least last check. They're in the green by half a percent. They had dipped yesterday despite swinging back to profitability in the third quarter because the carrier warned that rising fuel costs could push them back to a loss in the current quarter. But investors and travelers are way more concerned perhaps about the immediate future, as in this weekend. Could Southwest's issues spread, and what are the majors doing to dodge that possibility? Let's find out from Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastian. Ed's joining us live. Thank you so much for being here, Ed. You know, we're 48 hours from the weekend, so we're talking about the next couple of days. Delta did not experience anything close to what Southwest did, but surely from an operations perspective, it had to have caught your attention. What's your assessment from where you sit, outside of Southwest, obviously, but from what you looked at as to what happened there? Uh, first of all, great to be with you, Liz. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Uh, we fly in the same airspace, Delta. You know, we're based here in Atlanta. Obviously, we have a large presence in Florida. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with making sure that we're very disciplined as to how we're approaching the recovery. Uh, you know, the recovery has been very choppy over the last uh, year, and you want to make sure you don't put more supply into the marketplace and make commitments and sell it to your customers than you can f fulfill. And Delta's done a great job all year long with making certain that we're managing supply and demand in equilibrium. So in, in Florida on uh, Friday, in fact, the entire weekend, we had 20 cancellations and no cancellations after Friday night. So we're running a great uh, airline. Our people are doing a great job. Can't comment on Southwest. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but I can tell you customers can absolutely book with confidence on Delta. Well, they had more than well, close to 2,000 over the this, weekend. So, yeah, it, I mean, obviously, you guys did not have that that similar thing. But as you look at it from the standpoint of a CEO running a major airline, you, you, I'm guessing you scrutinized it. And did you take any proactive measures or make any slight changes or add on to what you've already done to make sure that you guys don't get sucked into what at least some of the employees have complained about at Love, which was a, a brittle operation strategy? Again, we, we've, we're all operating in the same airspace in our country throughout the summer. It's been a difficult operating environment, no question about it, as, as everyone's come back. It seemed like came back overnight to, to uh, travel, which we love uh, this summer. But it's being very disciplined, you know, making certain we're not trying to, to outgrow our ability to have pilots and crews mm -hmm. in the right place. But one thing at Delta that we measure is what we call our brand days. And brand days are when we have perfect completion, meaning we don't have a single cancellation we like those. amongst <laughs> the 4,000 flights that we fly a day. We, this, this year to date, we've had 116 of those days, perfect days across our system, which is right on par with where we were in 2019 pre-pandemic. So I can't give enough thanks to the Delta team providing a great product for our customers. And it's one of the reasons we were profitable this quarter. Well, the Delta team has to be growing ahead of what is expected to be a very busy holiday season. Tell me about the hiring. I know that you had said on your conference call that Delta's hired 8,000 workers this year, but that also you haven't had to increase the level of entry pay. Uh, how is that possible? I, I find that incredible because look, FedEx says that its, its wages are double what they were last year. Uh, and we know that American Airlines is expected to uh, hire thousands. And some of the air, other airlines are boosting up all kinds of employees. So won't there be competition and won't you then have to raise wages? We pay a great wage, uh, though we haven't had to increase the wage. And Delta is a great hiring company. It's a great brand. People want to work for us. Uh, recently, we announced that we we're going to be hiring 3,000 flight attendants. We had over 35,000 applications within a week, and we had to shut down the application portal because there was just so, so much demand for those opportunities. So people want to come here to work. Uh, I'm proud of that. They, they see Delta as a great company, a great place to work with great benefits, including travel. And uh, we're going to continue to keep that brand strong. We're showing your live um, hiring website. I mean, I look today, and the gate agents and ramp agents and, and HR, all kinds of uh, possibilities, not just pilots. But are you confident, let me just ask this, that you will have enough pilots uh, during the Thanksgiving weekend and then beyond that to Christmas and New Year's? Absolutely confident. We've been 
planning for the upcoming holiday period all year long. This is not something that we, we move month to month. So we knew what level of supply we wanted to put in the marketplace. We made sure we had our pilots in the right categories, the right training in, in position. We've got people on the phones. We've got, the, we've got over 4,000 people we've added in, onto our airport staff. And we're absolutely ready. We can't wait to welcome people back to the skies. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't congratulate you on swinging back to profitability in the third quarter. Amazing. But you did warn about higher jet fuel costs. That's no surprise to anybody who's been watching spiking crude oil and, of course, all the integrated oil areas, too. But, uh, you know, what are you doing to mitigate that? And, and I'm thinking because you guys had made, an, uh, I believe, two weeks ago an, an announcement on basically... Uh, about a billion, I believe, in investing in biofuels or sustainable fuels. I want to bring you back to 2008. So this was a while ago. I had an opportunity to talk to Sir Richard Branson because he had just completed a flight uh, using coconut oil, among other sustainable oils, on a flight that uh, over Europe. And he said this, and then I'd love to have you react to what he said. What we wanted to do was prove that um, that. Uh, a clean fuel could be used. Um, this is not going to be the, the ultimate fuel because there's just not going to be enough coconuts in the world to power, you know, to power all the planes in the world. Um, but what we're doing is developing something called algae. Um, and I think that there will be, you know, we can develop enough algae to power all planes in the future on clean fuels. So tell me about your sustainable future because it's just business, I would imagine, as we saw jet fuel prices spiking considerably just since August. Well, we are investing, as you mentioned, and by the way, working very closely with Richard. He's a good friend, and we're joint, joint owners of Virgin Atlantic together. Uh, sustainable aviation fuels, biofuels made from all various for, uh, sources and uh, resources. We've got a commitment to have 10 percent of our total fuel supply by the end of this decade in sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, we announced, you're right, uh, some very large commitments, uh, 250 million uh, gallon uh, offtake agreement with one provider and, and several other initiatives as well recently to make sure that we're on the path to get there. Mm. There's a long way to go. Uh, we need the government's involvement and commitment because right now sustainable aviation fuels are coming in at a cost somewhere between three to four times higher than what we're paying for today's jet that's fuel, a, which, as you mentioned, is already high to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we need, we need the incentive, the commercial incentive for the energy companies to be able to produce the fuel and for the airlines to be able to afford the fuel. Uh, the hottest discussion right now in D.C. is the supply chain crunch. You guys have actually had a really interesting growth tra trajectory for uh, your cargo business. Can you talk a little bit about that? And, and have you started to see uh, more movement there, more demand, and will you eventually have pricing power to raise your prices? Well, our cargo business is, again, another reason why we were able to swing back to profitability in the current quarter. Our revenues are up close to 50%. Uh, over where they were in the 2019 level because air freight has become a more uh, affordable uh, source for, uh, for shipping product. And, uh, of course, pricing has also gone up. So the revenues are up considerably. We're not flying uh, nearly or only about half of our international supply right now because the markets are still closed. So we're making flights such as to Australia and other parts of the world it's based solely on cargo. We're doing uh, cargo charters with some of our passenger aircraft. So that's a real opportunity. The team pivoted well when we saw this problem pop up over a year ago. Uh, I want to see the bottlenecks uh, relieved because it's best for everyone that we get the world moving and the logistics flowing more smoothly. But in the meantime, we're doing our share and trying to bring more and more product to, uh, to the U.S. market. Well, uh, your, your leadership it has been really flexible, and I think that that has, has made the difference when it comes to exactly that. You've been able to pivot. But that leads me, when you talk about uh, what makes things better for the world, you are the last U.S. carrier holding out on uh, the vaccine mandate for your employees. Tell me why. Well, the reason the mandate was put in by the president, I believe, was because they wanted to make sure companies had a plan to get their employees vaccinated. Uh, a month before the president came out with the, the mandate, we'd already announced our plan to get all of our people vaccinated. And the good news is, is the plan is working. 
Uh, Delta today, we are 90% vaccinated, fully vaccinated across our entire company, and more and more vaccinations are coming in by the day. So I expect by the time we get to November next month, we're going to be at the 95% threshold. And when you consider there's going to be religious and some uh, medical accommodations made uh, that we're going to need to consider, by the time we're done, we'll be pretty close to fully vaccinated as a company without going through all the divisiveness of a mandate. You know, we're proving that you can work collaboratively with your people, trusting your people to make the right decisions, respecting their decisions, and not you know, forcing them over the loss of their jobs. Ed, uh, I appreciate you uh, coming on and talking about so many issues here. Thank you very much, and, and we'd love to have you back in the fourth quarter. Of course. Great to be with you, Liz. Anytime. Ed Bastian, 